Rob Tebbett for Boxing Social. Delighted to be joined here today by the White Rhino, Dave Allen. We're here in Leeds. How are you, Dave? Very well, thank you. People are getting into an annoying habit lately of talking right into the microphone. Why is that? Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Dave? It's been a while. Yeah, I'm all good, mate. I've not seen you since... Uh, well, I've seen you myself personally, but I've not been not been doing much since July 28th when I knocked Nick Webb out in the fourth round at the O2. Packed, half packed, quarter packed at O2 Arena. Just been, um, been enjoying life, really, since then. Obviously, I've got a fight in two weeks, but it ain't stopped me enjoying it. So, um, so yeah, you know, no, 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 nothing really happening. Just, just plodding away, plodding on. They mentioned that you're supposed to be out in a couple of weeks' time. How's things? You know, I, I, I did. I genuinely didn't want to box till next year. I wanted a bit of time off. Um, but, you know, um, got offered the fight day in Newcastle TV slot, so... You know, I took it, um, opponent we're still not sure about. So, you know, the opponent's right and whatever else, I'll fight because I like to and I get bored. So that's that's the plan. The plan is to fight in two and a half weeks. You know, the tickets are sold and looking forward to it. Now, you mentioned that you weren't supposed to fight this year. Now, we had a deal in the build-up to the Nick Webb fight and afterwards that yeah. win, lose or draw, you would only fight again if it was Las Vegas. Yep. Now, I know some Geordies will say Newcastle is the Las Vegas of the UK, but it's not quite. So why why the change of heart? You seem very hell-bent on the fact that you weren't going to box again this year. Yeah, I was adamant about that, but, you know, I was offered the Newcastle, the slot on the Newcastle card, televised slot. I was on the top table at the press conference. It was nice. Um, and, you know, I, I really enjoy boxing. I just enjoy it. I enjoy everything about it. I enjoy the fight week. I enjoy the fight. Um... And, and boxing, like I've always said, it keeps me on the straight and narrow. Not in not in a sense of in trouble, but in a sense of keeps me busy, keeps me occupied. And you know, um, the Newcastle fight really, like I shouldn't say it really, but I'm not that arsed, You know what I mean? It's just about I've got to go in there, and do the job, get a win, um, and then uh, hopefully get 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 a big fight in. Well, not even the end of the year, ideally, ideally next year. Um, what? Don't know what else to say about that. Really, without sounding negative, I just um, want to get this Newcastle fight out of the way and then have a proper rest. I still not had a proper rest. Still been at it from the from the web fight again, ready for this very steadily, I might add. But I've not had a rest mentally. And things since the web fight, things have been busy. Um, been doing all sorts. I need to t learn to say no to some things. But um, but yeah, we get Newcastle out of the way. Hopefully, we get someone awful and I'll bang right around and. And, and have a bit of time off. Now you mentioned you need to learn to say no to things. Now you said no to Sergei Kuzmin on the Joshua Povetkin undercard. Um, why was that? I felt like it was a challenge from Eddie. Um, I had a good talk with Eddie on the phone, a good 20 minutes, and he said, do you want to fight Sergei Kuzmin? Um, it was six figures, 100 grand. And he said, do you want to fight Sergei Kuzmin, 100 grand, or do you want to fight in Newcastle? Um, you know, I talk figures for, for five times for 20 grand in Newcastle. Uh, in a fight that like you will win, or I should win, you know, you know, there's no difference in boxing. So you can either fight, you can fight and, and it be an 80, 20, 70, 30 in your favour for 20 grand, or you can go in there out of shape against a guy, Kuzman, and it's an 80, 20, 90, 10 in his favour. And for me, that wasn't Eddie saying, do you want to fight Kuzman or do you want to fight in Newcastle? It was saying, do you want to take your boxing career seriously and win things, or do you want to make some money? And I said, Eddie, I said, I'm not involved in boxing to make money. I'm involved in boxing to win things and to keep doing what I'm doing, keep enjoying what I'm doing because my enjoyment is not from the money I make out of boxing, my enjoyment is from winning and from doing things like we've done today. Um, past the smile log, you know, these things I can and bring in. You know, I went to Leeds last night, I went to, a, went to my new mate's uni house and I think I made, made their evening. So, stuff like that, I'm in boxing because it gives me a, a platform to to do nice things for others, so 20 grand, 100 grand makes no difference, I just want to win. And that's what I said to him. And I think he was happy to hear that, so so, we, so, we, so we're in Newcastle, not Sir Guy Cousman. I wouldn't have beat Sir Guy Cousman. If I was 100% fit, he'd be a big favourite, but in the shape I was in, well, I'm not I'm not in terrible shape, but I ain't in shape for being Sir Guy Cousman. 
It hasn't always been like that though. Um, you've been out of shape and you've boxed people who are better than you uh, mm. by your own admission. Um, what's changed now? Why is it different now compared to where it was when you boxed the likes Dillian White, Lewis Ortiz? I'm there, kind of. I'm not saying I'm the best fighter in the world, but I've got the platform now, the fan base, the, the popularity, the ticket sales, and I can go as far as I want to go in this sport now. I've got an opportunity, I can go as far as I want to go, as far as my ability and my work ethic will take me, is, is that's how far I can go. Whereas when I was boxing Dylan White and OTs, I was taking whatever came to me, trying to get that opportunity. I've got an opportunity now where if I'm good enough, I can go as far as I want to go. Uh, Eddie and Matt's room and Sky, I feel like, I'm not saying I'm nowhere near their number one priority, but like, you know, I'm somewhere in the in the back of the mind thinking Dave Allen, the popular kid and whatever else. And so yeah, let's, let's go and win things, you know. I don't want to be the gallant loser. Quite enjoyed beating it. It was quite. It was kind of nice, and I and I prefer to keep doing that than to keep being that brave man that like that keeps getting the call and losing. You know, I've done that. I've been there. It wasn't very fun. So let's, I want to be. I want to be a winner now. I want to be a winner. That's something that my colleague um, Paul, who we will see um, with some of the stuff that we've shot today, he mentioned uh, a quote that stuck with him and me from one of our interviews that we did, one of our many interviews we did before you boxed Nick Webb, where you likened yourself to a high-end prostitute. Mm -hmm. um, now, while coarse, it's, it's, it sort of, it does, it does make sense. Do you still feel like that? Do you still, is that kind of still how you feel? I mean, you've just turned something down, yeah. so now you're turning punters down, as it were. Um, is that still how you feel? Yeah, that's what all boxers are, even Floyd Mayweather, even the greatest fighters in history. We're getting paid to put our bodies on the line so that's what we are I'm, I'm people are paying me to um to give my body to the to the paying public first and foremost not the opponent the paying public they're the ones paying for me to get in there and fight for their entertainment so i am there i am one of their many prostitutes on that night there's 10 fights on the card there's 20 prostitutes on that card because you're paying us for for us to give a little bit of our body to you because every fight you have every hard fight the yoker fight Yoko took took a lot out of my, that, that night. I gave a I gave a lot, you know. Probably took probably took a two or three year of my career that night. Um, so that's what we are as boxers, as MMA fighters, as we we are prostitutes because prostitution really uh, prostitution is not is, is and if you look it up in the dictionary, which I haven't, but I assume it wouldn't say paying a woman for sex or whatever. It would say the act of giving one's body for money. And, and that's what boxing is in my eyes, you know. Um, but I'm just very fortunate now that I'm becoming a high-end, high-end girl, you know. So um, yeah, and, and I always say I, I'm not under no illusion that I'm I'm a high-end girl due to my boxing ability or whatever else. Um, and very fortunate to be in the position I'm in, you know, through to due to different reasons. But I'm here and I'm enjoying my life as a high-end prostitute. For the for the for the future, as long as that may last, I hope it lasts for the next couple of years of my career. You mentioned that. Did the Yoka fight, um, forgetting the stuff that happened outside the ring, or not forgetting it, but putting it to one side for a minute, did that change your outlook on things? Kind of going over there, taking a beating. Um, you've just sort of mentioned the fact that that that's taken two or three years off your career. Has that made you assess this kind of risk reward thing a little bit differently than perhaps when you were younger with less miles on the clock? Yeah, because. Um, I don't fight for money. Genuinely, I never had a penny in my life. I don't need it. I'm not. I don't need it. If you took all, all my stuff away from me now, I still. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be bothered. As long as I've got somewhere to sleep at night, I'm not interested. So, um, as you can tell by my clobber, <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> but um, so the money's not the thing. The thing is, I want to be successful. So, I, 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 that's why I, I was saying I wasn't going to box again because the yoke fight felt like. Um, all the stuff that came out afterwards, it doesn't matter if he, if he came out and none of that came out and he was just a clean fighter and there was no question marks around it, I'd have felt the same. I'd have felt like I'm a 26 year old kid um, with my whole life ahead of me. And, and that yoke fight, for, for the, till the web fight was announced six days before, I wasn't, I wasn't the same man. I spoke to you before the yoke fight. Mm. And I wasn't the same man then, really. I was, I was a bit. Um, the Thomas fight broke me out a bit because that was my night, you know. And I walked out to the thing. Even Eddie Hearn looked at me when I got in the ring and said, "Wow, this is this is special. Like all these people here." And it didn't happen. Then the Howe fight in front of 30 people at Warsaw, 
a move around. It was a move around. It was the most embarrassing thing I've ever done in my life. I'm glad there was only 30 people there. I wish there was three because it was embarrassing. I accidentally knocked him out. And I thought, you know what? I'm not even in love with boxing no more. The yoga fight came. I put three, I put, I put two weeks training in, went over there. And I said to you on the phone, I said, I cannot beat Tony Yoka. When I got when I watched the ring, I thought I'm gonna give this fucker a go because that's what I'm about. And if he ain't the real deal, I'll have some success. It just turned out it was the real deal, and he may have had some help in doing so. So um, and I got my face smashed in, and after that fight, I was I was really uh, I was ill, you know. I wasn't for a month after. I didn't feel myself. People were saying, "Oh, he's concussed, this and that." I'm not saying any, that. I'm not saying any of that. That wasn't that wasn't the case. I was just ill. I just had my face punched in for 30 minutes, for 29 minutes. The referee couldn't even let me see it through. You know what I mean? And that brought me out getting stopped again because I don't like to get stopped. I went put on my back, but getting stopped, it just fucking it ruins a man's... Um, I pride myself on being on being a hard man, do you know what I mean? I was brought up to be hard. We don't get stopped. My dad didn't get stopped as a professional. You don't get stopped. You don't. You don't. You get beat, but you don't get stopped. And uh, that, that broke me out again. And I was just sick of boxing. And when the web fight came up, I wasn't really bothered about that. I was review fight week web and I wasn't bothered. I thought, you know what? I was for the first time in my career I was thinking, you know what? There was a bonus in the fight, but I didn't give a fuck about the bonus. I thought, you know what? Let's get this fight out of the way. Use the money to put a deposit down on an house. And give myself a little give myself a few months of comfortableness so I could put some money into Danny Morell to train him. Now, as you mentioned, I did speak to you before the Yoka fight, and it's something that we've alluded to even on camera before. I didn't quite... It was kind of like a half-chat, half-telephone interview that never really saw public domain, really, because you were in a very low place, and it was... You know, I know you've had your history in the past, but that was a particularly low point going into fighting an elite-level fighter. Mm -hmm. How are you different now, and how do you guard against things like potentially happening again or cropping up in your career again? Well, I... I remember the, the telephone call. I was sat there in 19 stone, sat in a chair in a garden, and um, you know I call them periods on my brains. I was it was one of the moments. Mm. And I thought I'm gonna fight to Tony Oak in two and a half week, and and uh, at that moment in time I wouldn't have been able to fight Paul. <laughs> I was that. I was just I was down and out, and um, but obviously these things change. I can be in one of the moves, and ten minutes later I can be really happy. So it's. It's nothing. It's nothing new to me or whatever. But, but now, what do I feel like now? I don't. I don't feel any different. I was a miserable bastard yesterday. Proper miserable, <laughs> you know. And I've got the world at my feet, really. Like in terms of, I'm not saying I'm not Anthony Joshua making 20 million a fight and got the world at my feet. Links, links aren't sponsoring me and Under Armour. But the world at my feet is a very different. The world that is a is one where I can. Buy an house off and maybe buy another one, and and I and I, and I might and I might be able to go on holiday once a year now, and I might be able to do this, and I might be able to um, not spend any money on clothes because I don't, and I might be able to save that money and and not have to work again one day because I've only got to make half a million quid and I, and I never have to work again. <laughs> so the world at my feet is just a different world, a different set of pair of feet, you know. So um, pair of foot, pair of foot, pair of feet. Pair of feet pair of feet so right now I'm just focused on genuinely number one first and foremost is winning and keep doing what I'm doing last of the things but I'm driven I'm driven now by I'm not saying I never thought I was gonna live beyond 50 because I was ever in any kind of trouble and with the law and, and I was never gonna make 50 like I'm making out I'm Tupac or Notorious B.I.G never gonna make 50 but I, I just never saw myself living to 50 years old because I was I'm 26 now and I feel really old. I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm never going to see 50 years old. You think that as a kid, don't you, Rob? You just think, I'm, I'm never going to be 50. But now I think, you know what, I might be 50 one day. <laughs> I need to make some money and and not be working till I'm 70. So um, I've got a bit of ambition now. I'm, I'm ambitious about not only boxing, but about life. Whereas before, I didn't care. I used to get me money, gamble it, have a fun week, and then be back down, suck it. Um, which I was, I was quite happy down in the in the... In the in the poverty-stricken area I was in, I was fine <laughs> living that life. But I've seen now, I've been lucky. The you no, know, maybe in the last year or two, uh, a friend called Tom got on board. He was sponsoring me. He's a good friend of mine now, and and thanks to him and a few others, I've seen a different. I've seen a different side of life now. Life isn't. Life doesn't have to be all um, struggle and 
than living off steak bakes. Do you know what I mean? There's more out there. There's more to the world that I've seen. And I'm not asking for I'm not asking for everything. I'm just, I'm just thinking, you know what? Let's go and let's go and do something nice. Let's have a nice life now. And I'm, I want to do that. So I'm I'm ambitious in that sense. Um, and obviously, boxing is just the thing that can give me that life. They say you're ambitious. Where where's the end goal? I mean, I've heard you say that you know you'd like to be a British champion. I've heard you say in the immediate aftermath of the last fight, you know, I could be world champion. You get excited with yourself sometimes. What what represents to you a successful career or a successful life? Is it is it a British title or is it just being happy in yourself and having enough money where you don't have to do you don't have to work, you don't have to struggle. What yeah. what is success to you? The British title is something I want to win. I want to win it before my granddad dies. I hope he don't watch this, but don't know how long, you know what I mean, he's 87 years old. I'd like to I'd like to get the British title won first and foremost. That would be the most important thing for me. Um at the minute, you know, Dubois and you know, and Gorman and whoever else is about Joyce, and it'd be a really great if I could win that. It'd be a really massive achievement for me. I'd, f I'd feel proud of winning it as well. So, first and foremost, winning the British title, and then out of life. It's difficult to say what I want out of life because I know I want to die eventually anyway. I can't have it forever, but um, come, I just want to be comfortable in my life. And and um, I and the thing people will watch this and they say Dave Allen's no good. He's this and that, but. I know um, I can win British titles, and I can I can compete at maybe a level two above that as well. I genuinely I genuinely know that. I don't think that I know that. So um, I just want to be the best fighter, the best man I can be, you know. And um, it sounds cheesy, but genuinely I'm um, just, um, I'm just I'm just doing my best. I'm not doing my best all the time. But I'm trying my best. Um, I'm trying my best. For, for, I'm trying my best to try my best. Basically, is what I'm doing, and um, I can't always do that. But, I, but I'm always trying my best to try my best. Talk to me about the Nick Webb fight. I had the pleasure of sitting in the car with you earlier while you were watching a Nick Webb interview. Um, you had some things to say about that. Yeah. Uh, tell me about it. Well, first and foremost, if it was a four-round fight, he'd have got knocked out anyway. Because I'm not smart in the fourth round. If it was a three-round fight, it'd run three rounds to nil. But it's not a three-round fight, it's a ten-round fight. It's not a three-round, it's not a four-round, it's a ten-round fight. And he won the first three rounds, but I let him win the first... I didn't let him win the first three rounds. He won the first three rounds because he was gassed in the fourth. He was knackered in the fourth. And if Nick Webb, if Nick Webb looks into his heart of hearts, he will know that. And, um, and I'm sure if I spoke to him myself, I'd say, Nick, you ain't got the experience... And you was walked down and out manoeuvred, and you did a little bit too much. You haven't got the experience. I'm not saying he's not a, he's not a bad fighter, but he didn't have the experience. I'm not saying he wouldn't. Well, he'll not be as good as me one day because he's too old. But he's not as good as me. The same way someone said to me, you answer Josh better than you. I'd say, well, yeah, well, yeah, it's to be fair. Yeah. And Nick Webb, for me, has to say the same about me because I beat him fair and square. I knocked him spark out effectively. He's saying that he he tried to get up and whatever else. He couldn't get up because he was he was unconscious on his feet, effectively. He wasn't even on his feet, he never even got up. Um, I like Nick Webb, so I don't really want to sit here and, and slag him off, because I do like him, so I don't want to create any bad blood out of something where there doesn't need to be, but he he will know in his heart of hearts that he wasn't the better man. If it was the better man, he would have won. It wasn't in the 10th round. He wasn't nine rounds up and I was a bloody mess. He, he hit me with about three shots in three rounds. The fourth round, he was. I won the fourth round, and then I knocked him out. Without even breaking a sweat or being out of breath, and I was, and he's saying, "Oh, I never trained, Nick. I'll tell you about not training, mate. I never trained a day for you. I was, I was up till five a.m. the night before, eating Haribo, as you know. I was in an all-you-can-eat Brazilian. I didn't take it serious. I'd, you know what, Nick? If you, if Nick Webb would have won that fight, I'd been really happy for him. I'd been over the moon for him. You know, at that time, I didn't care. You know, and I've been beat by Dylan White." Ortiz, Yoke are the better men. Lenroy Thomas beat me. I should, if I was fit, I feel like I would have beat him, but I didn't beat him. And I said, you know what, Lenroy, you just beat me in my own, in my own home ground, football ground, in front of all my own fans, thousands of people here. But you know what, you're the better man tonight. You beat me. We'll do it again. Now, if Nick Webb wants to say, David, you was the better man. I wasn't experienced. I'd like to have another shot at it in six months' time. I said, sound, Nick. If, if that if that makes sense and people want to see that and put it on then I'd like to do that, but 
you don't have to lie. People, if you lie to yourself, you ain't going to get anywhere. If I had put my head in the sand after the white fight and said, do you know what, like, I wasn't fit, it was short notice. I didn't say that. I said, you know what, there's levels, I'm levels and levels below where I need to get. And and and, and I was inexperienced. I went and got experience with the box Ortiz and Yoka and had other fights in between, the Thomas fights, and I got better. So if Nick Webb wants to have the mindset, it was a lucky shot and I pulled that at my bottom, I'll pull another one out of my bottom for him next time. I'll put two or three together next time, and he'll be flat on his back again. So I, I don't want to. I don't want to say anything bad about him. But I w what I would say to him is, watch the fight, be honest with yourself, and become a better fighter from it. Because what, what you're saying at the minute isn't going to make you a better fighter. It's gonna. It's gonna get you knocked out by me again. And um, and next time I'd come in 17 and a half stone, and I'd put him on his back in a round. And if he and, and if he in his heart of heart believed he would beat me. I'm very happy to do it again, and, and I never get animated by things. But I'm animated by what he said because, I, I, because more than anything else, I, w I would love to see him do well. A for him, and B for me because it made me look better. I'm not gonna lie, but A, A and B both strong points. So he needs to really look at himself and say, you know what, I wasn't the better man. I'm inexperienced, and and I need to get better. The end. <laughs> Talk to me about the recent show, Joshua versus Povetkin. Uh, we mentioned Sergei Kuzmin. He ended yeah. up fighting David Price. What did you make of that fight? I thought Price did really well. I think Kuzmin's a really good fighter. Kuzmin looked, uh, he didn't look spectacular, but he's solid. He's very tough, strong, can punch a little bit. He was hit into the body nice. I thought Kuzmin looked really well. I was impressed by him. Uh, Price impressed me for the four rounds. I thought he looked really well. He looked dangerous. He he was still pouring a little bit of the jab and whatever, but I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and give an Olympic bronze medalist a boxing lesson, but I'm just saying, from the outside looking in, he looked good, you know, still a few faults as we all make, I make more than most, but um, I thought he performed well, the fact, I wouldn't, pulling out the fight in the fourth round, I just thought, come on David, how many more chances are you going to get, mate? You, he rocked him in the fourth round, I think, the third or fourth round, I just thought, just go out there and just, just have a go, you know what I mean? Because I know full well you're only going to get so many chances and so many people are going to give you another chance. And, and I don't think pulling out of the fight did him any favours. I think um, it's still a big fight for all of us at domestic level. Me and like it's Daniel Dubois and Nathan Gone. We still look at David Price as a big fight and good money and, and, and good name value. But I was disappointed that he pulled out. I, I, I didn't want to see him get knocked out again. But I would like to have seen him gone out there and and just put it on the lines, you know what I mean? I, I didn't want to see him get knocked out again, which probably, if the injury was real, which I have no reason to believe it wasn't, that, that would have been the case, but just go out and have a go. Because I would have done, I promise you now. My arm was falling off, I'd have, I've got two arms. I've got two of them, I've got two biceps. I'll use the other one, the other one's fine. And um, I was disappointed for him, really, because I thought, you know what, you put in a really good performance, it was, it was a shame. You're somebody who's always very honest and very open. Do you think David Price will sort of pay the price, no pun intended, that was poor, um, for being too honest after the fight? He admitted to sort of going into the fight injured, which I know it does happen a lot yeah. more than people like to let on. But on a pay-per-view show, kind of admitting that you're injured and then withdrawing from the fight, is that going to do him harm going forward? Yeah, it's going to put people off, in it? David Price fights again, is he injured? Is he going to pull out? And There's one thing in boxing I don't like. I don't mind... Seeing people lose to a better man, I don't see people being knocked out unconscious, hit with a perfect body shot. But you don't quit in between rounds. I'm not bothered what's wrong with you. Doesn't matter. Because um, one thing I can come on, comment on is I, I can't comment on people's boxing ability, but I can say I never, you're never going to see me quit in a boxing ring. And boxing is boxing. Quitting in a boxing ring for me is like when you quit in a boxing ring, you should that should be it. You should have your license to off you. I feel that strongly about it. Because um, bo boxing, there's no place for quitting. I'm not getting on at David Price about it. If he's injured, he's injured. And you feel like he's got to pull out, and he's, he's and he's and he's saving his health for future for future things. But I just feel really. I feel for me, the day I ever quit in a fight is the day I'll never. I'd never put a pair of boxing gloves on again because I know in my heart of hearts, I ain't my eye in the game. And if it ain't in the game, it's too dangerous and get out. And, and um, even, you know, my heart's not been in the game, but my heart, when the bell goes, is always in the game. Probably too much sometimes. But uh, th as far as David Price is concerned, all the best to him. He'll come back and he can compete at British level. He fights against me and uh, and, and others. He'll be the favourite going into, I believe. So why not? Why, why not come back and, 
have another run at the domestic level. He's making his money in it, so you know I, I'm not going to sit here and say um, pack it in because it, it ain't my decision. What did you make of Anthony Joshua versus Alexander Povetkin? Um, generally speaking, a little bit more of a fun, entertaining fight, competitive fight than people thought. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think I think it was a good fight. I enjoyed it. I thought I said on Sky Sports News because I was on there as a pundit. I said um, I said I thought that Joshua would win halfway. Close to the fight got, I kind of got myself into the the thought process that Povetkin was too old. And I think Povetkin five years ago might have been a different fight because I don't think Joshua's a finished article yet. Joshua for me is improving every time, and uh, and as a boxer, like I'm a I'm a big fan of him. He brings excitement, and he's he's, he's good. He's very very good. He's getting, I, I spied him a lot years ago. I think I was a bit blinkered. I was still seeing the 2012, 13, 14, 15 Joshua. Um, it's 2018 now. I've not spied him for years, and he will have improved leaps and bounds. And I watched him against Povetkin. I mean, I watched him against Klitschko, I was impressed. And the other fights, even the park and the tackle fights, I was impressed. But um, the manner in which he's beating these fighters, and I know they said Takam's an old man, and he got on top of Isazor, and, and Klitschko's an old man, and Povetkin's an old man, but he's only beating what's in front of him, and he's doing it in, he's doing it in good style, and he's coming from adversity to do it. And I, it's, I think it's hard to knock him at the minute. I'm a big Fury fan, as everyone knows. I'm a big friend of Tyson, and I think the world of him. But at the minute, Joshua has to be the number one everywhere in the world because he's out there. He's, he's fighting two or three times a year. He's fighting, he's fighting good opponents, isn't he? With Povetkin, Parker, Klitschko, Takam, all on the bounce. Can't, I can't knock him. I can't knock him. Got to see him as he's the best everywhere in the world. And he's brilliant for British boxing as well. So... Why do you think people do knock him? Because he does get an awful lot of criticism um, from various sections of the media, media and, and fans for various different reasons. Why do you think it is? In terms of boxing, there's no way you can knock him. I don't see how you can knock him. He's um, he's winning. He's fighting. The, for me, he's fighting the best opponents possible. While the Fury are the only two, really, that would be better wins on his record than what he's already got. You know, the Klitschko... Klitschko was a bit older. I think I don't. I wouldn't. I would count Fury and Wilder's better wins than Klitschko at that current stage of Klitschko's career. But apart from apart from that, really, you know, if he goes on to fight Wilder and Fury in the next 12, 18 months and beats him, he cleaned up the division inside 25, 26 fights. I think the white fight is next. I think the white rematch is next in April. Um, I mean, I'd rather see him fight Wilder or Fury. The Wilder Fury winner if that fight's happening in December. But I don't see I see the white fight happening next and then the winner of Wilder Fury. And if he goes and beats White in April and the Fury Wilder winner in September, if he goes and beats both of them, we've got an undisputed FA champion who's cleaned up the division in twenty in twenty five fights. And it's at twenty nine years old. Um so how can we knock him on boxing? We can't. People give him grief, they say he's this and that, he's stubble thing and, and match room. People don't like match room and stubble and whatever else. But for me, Someone who doesn't buy tickets to his fights, who doesn't care what he comes out of his mouth. I don't care if he's boring, I don't care if he's fake, I don't care. I, I'm a boxing fan and as a, and as a boxer right now, I have to, he's the number one man, he's where I want to be. So I can do nothing but respect him. In the past I've given him some grief. I'm not probably not his biggest fan on a personal basis. Professionally, I, I think he's exceptional. And I think he's brilliant for boxing and long may it continue. And if he doesn't fight, if he fights White and Fury, I'll be backing them as, as my personal friend. But I can do nothing but admire him, really. When, when I watch him, I just think, fantastic. Because I've known him for a lot of time. I've known him a long time now. 2012, we sparred for the Olympics. And if you would have told me then he was going to be going to do what he's doing, I, I would have said, I'm not sure about that. So I think what he's doing is exceptional. Now you say that you think he's going to fight Dillian White next. Yeah. Why? Why do you think that? Fury Wilder, say Fury Wilder does happen December 1st. That fight, they're not going to want to fight in April, I wouldn't have thought. Um, they'll leave it, they'll let it bubble up and grow a bit longer. And Who else is there? The weight division is good. There's good fighters out there. Jarrell Miller's a good fighter. I think there's better fighters than them, but he's a character, isn't he? So instead of Jarrell Miller being just a top 50 man, his character automatically puts him as a top 10, top 15, because we're living in 2018. And being a character accentuates where you are in the rankings, effectively, like myself. Yeah, I don't deny it. 
if I wasn't who I was, I'd be I'd be Sam Sexton, I'd be Gary Cornish. Even though I think I'm a better fighter than them, I've done nothing really to show that. Apart well, then it, I'm not new about. I don't know if anyone saw it, but um, it accentuates his rating. I think Jarrell Miller's not as good as Bryant Jennings, but where's Bryant Jennings? Who hears about Bryant Jennings? Who knows about Bryant Jennings? Not many. Other fighters out there. Or T's won't get a look in. Why would you give him a look in? He's a big, dangerous, horrible bastard. <laughs> I think White Josh will happen. Am I? Am I? Amazingly excited by that. Not not particularly. I think Dylan White is a real top ten man now, but is Joshua maybe just a bit too big and strong for him? Maybe, in my opinion. I'd love Dylan White to win that. But really, in the cold light of day, do I think he will? I'm I'm not sure. I think Joshua's a bit too big and strong for 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 everyone but Wilder and, and um I think Wilder, Joshua and, and, and Tyson are the top three men. There's a little little gap below, and I think I think Dylan White could even be number four. But them top three men are going to take some beating. I think they're going to be the best three fighters of this um, generation, and they're all very different and and colourful characters. Because the Anthony Joshua I know in 2012, 13, 14, 15, he's a funny man, <laughs> and he's probably a nasty bastard as well. Let's bring that out. Because I'll tell you something. Him and Tyson going at it, it would sell. Him and Wilder going at it, it would sell. Let's see more of that because I think that'd be fantastic, uh, and it'd sell a few pay-per-views as well. So I'd like to see it. You know, I'm I'm a massive boxing fan, Rob. Do I really see myself getting to that level? No. So I just enjoy it for what it is on the TV. You kind of mentioned that you know Anthony Joshua from 2012, 13, 14, etc. Yeah. Um, you say that he has a sort of different personality. He's he's funny, and by your own admission, just there he can be a bit nasty. Why 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 do you think we don't see that? Do you think there is another side to him that we that we could see? I mean. Yeah, you know, he's got his past, hasn't he? We've all got our past. We've all we've all done things when we were younger than may or may may or may not have done. But um, the, the Anthony I knew in 2012, he, I'm not saying he that like that now. He was a very funny man. He used to enjoy his company. Um, people say you don't like him. It's not that I don't. I don't dislike him. I don't really dislike anyone in the world. I dislike a few people. But if I dislike you, you're a massive balance. If you're watching this and you know I don't like you, you know you're a cunt. But um, sorry about that. But um, Anthony Joshua, I don't dislike him, and he was a funny character. He was, he's, he's, he's infectious to be around. He's all right. Um, didn't pay me to spar. And at the time, didn't bother me. Years gone by, I thought, you know what? That's, that's fucking cheeky bastards. That pissed me off. He once said something to me when I was sparring with him regarding Fury, and I said, listen, you know what I mean? Like, I don't. I'm not going to be spoke to like that. I can't remember the actual words now. I was sparring with him and he said, you're not in Team Fury now and he, and he tried putting it on me. And I thought, do you think I'm a bell end or something? Do you, think, do you think I'm coming here to spar you, travelling all this way to spar you? I ain't getting paid. At the time, I didn't really, still didn't think about they're not getting paid. I thought, I'm not getting paid. But really, so that kind of clouded my judgement a little bit um, on him. I was negative on him for a while because I thought he really pissed me off. But really, I want to say I'm a fan. I'm not a fan of anybody. I'm a fan of myself. He's all right. He's all right. He's good for boxing. I hope Tyson knocks him out of the box. But apart from that, and I, I'd like to see Dylan White knock him out as well. But apart from that, I'd like to see him win. So I think he's great for boxing and he's all right. And I'm sure if you're asking the same about me, it's a Dave Allen and go, mm, he's, he's, he's all right. <laughs> he's all right. So, um, so yeah, I haven't really got anything bad to say about, any, bad about anybody, you know. Um, and I think I think he's doing fantastic. I hope he I hope he keeps it going as long as he doesn't fight any of my friends. <laughs> Who do you think wins out of him and Deontay Wilder if they are to fight? Um, obviously, there's a lot to happen before that fight can ever be really considered. Um, obviously, Fury versus Wilder, um, Anthony Joshua versus Dylan White. If that is indeed the fight for April, how would you see Joshua versus Wilder going? It's a difficult one because Joshua's getting better all the time, and Joshua's very tough. I've noticed these last few fights, I thought, he's a tough fucker, you know. I was aspiring to think, is he tough? Can he do these rounds? And obviously, over time, the clits go fight, Povetkin Saturday, um, he's a tough man, isn't he? He's tough, you've got to be tough to be, to be at the level he's at, you know, you've got to be tough, but he's, a, he's exceptionally tough. And I think I think he's got better fundamentals than, than Wilder, you know, he's, he's, he's on the GB, and they all box like they've got a pole their arse. But it's the fundamental correctly way of doing boxing. I don't agree with it. it wouldn't be how I box, but it's fundamentally correct. And his shots get from it to be very, very nice and sharp and crisp because you know obviously the nice straight shots. And he can punch a bit. He, he's um, 
he's very he's very good now. He's become a very good fighter, well rounded. I'm not sure about the shoulder roll. The whole thing he was doing the other day with Povetkin. I thought, what the fuck is he doing? He's gonna get knocked out. <laughs> but um, but Wilder's got that got that power. That it doesn't matter how tough you are, he'll just put you to kick. So it's interesting because with Wilder with the Ortiz fight, like he was getting beat. He was getting wor- he was getting hammered on the scorecards. I mean, he lost nearly every round. But after the round, that he didn't drop him in. But I'd, I'd edge towards Joshua because I think he's the better man. But like Wilder power, he could fight it. He could say, would Wilder be Muhammad Ali? He'd say no. But he's got that punch. Like, I'm not using Muhammad Ali, but just any man in history. You could put any fighter in the world against Deontay Muhammad Wilder. Fucking hell, what am I talking about? Against Deontay Wilder. And you'd have to give Deontay Wilder a chance because Fiat's him. He's going to put him to sleep. The same with Tyson. I'm worried for Tyson because Tyson, for me, is, a, is the most talented man I've ever seen in my life, boxing. But that power, you worry about it. So I'd make Joshua the favourite, but it wouldn't be a fight I'd, if I was a betting man still. <laughs> I wouldn't be touching it with a barge pole. Uh, because Wilder's dangerous, a very dangerous man. Is that why that fight's not happening? Just because he is such a dangerous man? It's kind of like, not fear of the unknown, but something like that, isn't it? There's 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 easier ways to make your money, as it were. Yeah, you know, you make 20 million for Povetkin, 20 for Parker, 20 for Takam, or, or do you just go 60 for, 50, 60 for Wilder? Are you taking your three steady 20s? That's like I talk like that, but I'm talking thousands, not millions. <laughs> <laughs> do I take three? Do I take Kuzman for hundred, or do I take these Teddy jobs for twenty grand, which is a lot of fucking money? But obviously, when you talk, I, I don't know. If I was Joshua, and I've already got 30, 40, 50 million in the bank, I'm saying fuck this, get me wild there. I want to be the best in the world. Your money's made. If I had, if I had one million, I'd say fuck it. I'm retiring. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> never mind fighting every fucker else, but. I don't know. I, th- I think it's going to be White than Wilder Fury winning. If he does that, I don't think anyone can moan. People will moan that he's fighting White. Um, for me, White, in the current heavyweight climate, how it is, I think he's it. I don't think we can be grudging that shot. And I do make Joshua a massive favourite, as I've said, but I think the first time they fought, Joshua was the fav- crowd favourite. Dylan White's come a bit of a crowd favourite, hasn't he? Mm. He's come out of himself. And Dylan White's a nice fellow. I like Dylan White. He's all right. He didn't like me before, but... <laughs> He's a nice bloke, and I think I'd, I'd see it. I'd want to see it. The build-up would be good, and the fight would be good as, as, as long as it lasted, because they both have a good going. Yeah, fuck it. Let's do White Joshua. A gear earring. Come on, <laughs> let's get it done. But um, as long as I'm on the undercard, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> While the Fury, um, tell me about that. That fight is, by all accounts, done. About to be announced. Um, on Monday, there is a there is a press conference on Monday. Tell me about that fight. Is it too soon for Tyson Fury? You know him better than most. I do worry that about that. But when Tyson boxes, I'm a <coughs> like I said, I'm not really a fan of any boxer really. I'm a Tyson Fury fan as a man though. I, I, people always say, oh, you love Tyson. Well, you know, I do. Yeah, I like him. <laughs> he's a, he's just he's just a thoroughly decent, nice man. Um, I think he's the most talented. Fighter in the heavyweight division by a country mile. Does that mean you? Does that mean you're going to beat everybody? No, it doesn't because if Wilder hits you, like I said before, he'll not you out. Joshua hits you, not you out. So I do worry it's too soon. In three or four fights, well, I'd say three or four. I'd like, I'd like to have seen him been a bit busier in his comeback. His comeback was June, wasn't it? Sefri in June, and um, yeah. if you're fighting, if you're fighting Pianetta and Sefri, and you're not taking a shot, did he take a punch in either fight? I don't think he did. Get him out more often, get him out, I, I don't know. People might say, well, this is not how boxing works, David, Tyson is paying. <coughs> Knowing Tyson like I do, he'd be doing eight rounders for nothing. Just get him in, he shouldn't have been doing rounds. You're fighting Pianetta and Sefri, is good, for, I'm not saying I'm Pete Pianetta myself, <laughs> but when, you, when you're when the fight that Tyson is, you can fight Pianetta and you can, he could have fought two or three weeks after that. He could have fought Sefri, he could have fought Sefri's brother as well, straight after. So... I don't think his comeback. I don't think the comeback fights and the scheduling and whatever has been perfect. People say he's cashing out against Wilder. He ain't cashing out because that man will not will not lie down for nobody. You know, it'd be nice. It's nice that he's getting the money, but he ain't he ain't he ain't, he ain't gonna um, he ain't gonna lie down for him. And I and I expect I expect Tyson to win because I know him. And he's a fucker, and he, he Wilder will have to put him to sleep because if not, he'll not beat him. He can't beat Tyson on points. And unless he's unconscious, he's going to keep getting back up. So um, 
I'll be pulling for Tyson. I'm not. I'm not 100% confident. I really hope he does it. You know, I am. I am worried about the fight, as you'll be fighting against Wilder at any time. But, but, essentially, he's had two. He had one nothing fight in the Peter fight. It wasn't really a fight. It was a ten round spar, effectively. I'm not saying Peter didn't try, but the, the gap in class was just a little bit too much. He wasn't even competitive. Um. But I think I'd go for Tyson to beat anybody in the world because he's that good. Okay, and just finally, because you've got to go and train. Um, surprisingly, shockingly, <laughs> if you make it past Greg's. <laughs> um, something I'd like to get your opinion on. Uh, Billy Joe Saunders recently fined £100,000 by the British Boxing Board of Control. You're on Twitter more than anybody I know, so I've no doubt you saw the video. Just your thoughts on it. £100,000, first of all. Fucking hell, that's a lot of money, in it? First and foremost... I think that fine is very lofty. Now I've watched the video and I didn't like the video at all. Um, I didn't. People saying, "Oh, it's fantastic banter." Fantastic banter is is me. I'm fantastic banter. Witty banter. Witty hilarious remarks. Picking on picking on old people and that poor woman with a uh, pretty obvious drug addiction and her hitting a random. Innocent bystander in public is just not funny. Billy Joe is not I think he's an exceptional fighter, an exceptional talent. Um, and on the occasion I've met him, I found him to be a nice fella, a really nice fella. And I've done some child stuff in my time, but I didn't film it. <laughs> First and foremost, I didn't film it. And he, he he just needs to stop it, really, doesn't he? I'm not going to sit here and say, Billy Joe, world champion, grown man, don't do this, don't do that. But in my opinion, I don't like to see it, do you know what I mean? I'm not going to sit here and say, live your life like this, do this, do that. But I didn't enjoy it. I, I don't like it. But that's me. <laughs> I'm more into my... Um, my humour is very much different. So, um, but 100 grand, 100 grand is disgustingly steep. If I got 500 grand, I'd be like, what? I'm going to have to fight till I'm 60. <laughs> that doesn't stop him doing that, nothing will. But... There was some bad backlash from it, and he came out himself and he said, you know what, it was probably in poor taste, and it was. Things that aren't funny, people with drug addictions, people that are ill, people, things that are funny, people falling over, <laughs> toilet humour, things that are about food and stuff, that's funny. People with drug addictions and people that are ill and shit, that, that's probably not the way to go, but hopefully... You know, he just sticks to the boxing because Andrade is a really hard fight. And if he beats Andrade, um, could get a Canelo Golovkin fight. And he, he's good enough to, to definitely give him a fight. So he just sticks to the boxing because he could be the best middleweight in the world. So. We shouldn't bring that up because you've really got to go. But tell me who you had winning the Canelo Golovkin, Golovkin fight. Golovkin's won both fights for me. The first fight I thought he won, clearly. 9-3. The second one, I have seen it now and... I still think Glocking edged it. I think he probably. I still think he probably won seven, eight rounds. I, I couldn't give him any less than six, so he didn't lose the fight. Um, but I think I think they're taking lumps off each other, the two of them. I think if Saunders can beat Andrade, he doesn't. He does it in good fashion. Is the he's, I'm not saying he's not the real deal now, but he's the real, real deal. He's the Vander Holyfield of the middleweight. No, not well, not stylistically, yeah. but he's the real deal. So. Um, that division stacked, and the one below, the Charlos and that, fantastic. Great time to be a middleweight, a junior middleweight, or a fan of boxing. Big up the middleweight and junior middleweight division. <laughs> okay, and just finally, um, before we let you go, let's end on a positive note. We've been playing some chess today, a yeah. uh, bit of sparring uh, for the Past the Smile org. Uh, just tell fans of boxing social, boxing social and viewers what we've been up to today and how to get involved. Well, there's a video will be going up at some point. I don't know if there's a go up first or the other one, but watch it. It's been fun. Me and Paul have been playing chess, been boxing. Um, so for a good course, most most importantly, um, look out for the links of the Past the Smile Log Twitter account and the and the place you can go and donate or or, or whatever. And uh, if you can, if you're in a position to get involved, then get involved. It's um, I'm not gonna say it's a good cause, but it's a cause that is that is well needed. Um, help is well needed for it so just get involved and watch it, it was it was a fun day but it was for a very serious uh, thing so yes get involved if you can can you remember how to pronounce the illness 
all I can think about is Cinco de Mayo. I don't know why. Golovkin Canelo, isn't it? It was um, Mayo Psychoma. Well done. Is that correct? Rabdo Mayo. Rabdo Mayo Psychoma. It's all like Cinco de Mayo. Dr. Dave. Yes. Okay, well, Dave Allen, the White Rhino, the Doncaster de la Hoya, thanks very much for speaking to Boxing Social. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Always a pleasure to catch up with you, and I will see you soon. Yes. <laughs> You're a strange man. <laughs>